Welcome to my first vegetable garden. I'm starting a new series for 2017 called Grow As I Grow. And if you're new to gardening or relatively new to gardening, you can just follow along in my videos and they will take you along the process of starting all kinds of different vegetables, getting them into your garden. We'll come back, we'll talk about tending, we'll talk about harvesting. So we're really gonna cover the whole season, basically growing as I grow, tending the plants as I tend, and harvest as I harvest, if you'd like to follow along. Today we're gonna to talk about basil. I'm in Maryland zone seven, and basil's really ready to go outside mid-May when the frost is gone and the nights start to warm up. So I started these a little bit earlier for video purposes, but the first tip is, is you want to time your basil to grow indoors three to four weeks before it would go out into the ground. And that's usually when the frost is well gone, the nights are in the 50s, and the days start to warm up. So check that out in your zone, in your area, and then count backwards three to four weeks. And that's when you would start your basil. Now, if you're going to do a lots of basil plants, you can start them in seed trays like this, or you could start them right in cups. Either way, I'm gonna show you how to do both and then how to transplant these up into larger cups. And the reason you might just do this is you'll save yourself a step. You don't need to get them started in these smaller cells. You don't need to spend the money. You can just plant the seeds right into these cups and you're gonna save yourself some money in a step. All right, now there are about eight different kinds of basil here. The standard kind that you find that is used for pesto and in a lot of your stores is either the large leaf or the Genovese basil, and that's your classic basil flavor, classic for pestos and dishes like that. But you can find anywhere from 8, 12, 15, 20 different basils, different flavors, um, if you go online. I sell a lot of these on my shop. If you're interested, you can go there. If not, just look around and, and see what you like. Let's start with seed starting in the small cells. Now again, you can see I have 6, 12, 18, 24, uh, 30 basil plugs started here. I use a lot of basil. If you're not going to use all this, just start right in the cups. You want to pre-moisten your starting mix, get some water into there. You never want to put dry mix in here and then try and water. It's just a bit of a hassle. This is just Jiffy's starting mix. Nothing's added to it. In some cases, in the other videos, you might see me put neem oil and stuff in here, but you can just go with a straight starting mix. You don't need to put any fertilizers or feeds in there. We're gonna to get to that in a second too. So we're gonna plant some large leaf basil. Pour out your seed. You're not gonna put one or two seeds in here. Take a pinch, that's gonna be six, eight seeds, and just drop a pinch on here. You can grow basil perfectly fine with overseeded cells and plants growing next to each other. And again, the key is you want to start these three to four weeks indoors before you would put them out into your garden. You don't want these sitting six weeks, eight weeks because they're going to stay dwarf. They're going to start the flower and it's not what you want. You just want to get them started in here. Get them three weeks of growth, four weeks of growth. Once you have the seeds on here, you're just going to mix them in. Don't worry about the depth. If it's a quarter of an inch, if it's a half an inch, they're going to germinate and sprout through the starting mix. It's very loose. It's very fine. Now, why would you do this? Well, if you go to the store and you get one, two, three, four, five, six plugs, they're grown, you know, about that tall. Sometimes they're anywhere from two to four dollars each. The cost for this is probably under 50 cents to grow six of them. And not only do you save money, you also get a nice pack of seeds. You're not going to be able to use them all in seed starting. So as you're starting these indoors, they're getting to be three or four weeks. You put them out in the ground. You have nice transplants growing. Drop some seeds around there too, because as your transplants die out, the seeds will germinate and will be coming up right next to them. That's all you do. Put a label on them. And that is large leaf. I'm just going to write large leaf on the back. The date today is the 19th of March, 319, and drop it in. Now you could do the same thing here. I use a plastic cup. You can reuse these for years. Just cross it out and put down uh, the name of the plant. So this is going to be uh, cinnamon basil. It was started on 217. Today is 319. I like to put the start date and the transplant date into the cups. 
And here is my cinnamon basil plug. And again, I'm starting these a little bit early in Maryland Zone 7 for the sake of the video. You want to start these three to four weeks before the nights are in the 50s, frost is gone, and the temperatures start to warm up. Now this was Jiffy's starting mix. This is a little bit more expensive, um, but it's really worth it for when, you, when you're doing seed starting. If you were going to start your seeds directly in here, I would put um, half garden soil to here and then put the Jiffy mix right on top and plant in the Jiffy mix. That just helps with germination. But since I'm going from this nice healthy cinnamon basil plug to a cup, I don't need to use starting mix in here anymore. This is just plain old garden soil. It's a lot cheaper. Fill your cup up with the garden soil. You can use any product you want, but I'm just saying you can use garden soil here. It doesn't have to be the Jiffy starting mix. Gently hold this, drop it in, tap it around, and you've transplanted your basil. It'll grow a nice root system in there. And I just mark it cinnamon. It really does taste like cinnamon. So I have, real quick, this is a dark opal basil. Tastes like regular basil, a little bit milder. This is a lemon basil. It does taste like lemon. It's great in sauces. Siam Queen, a little bit of a spice to it. This was the large leaf basil, the Genovese. This is a dwarf Greek basil. Um, a little bit more spicier. Um, it stays small. It's great in pots. And this is a spicy globe basil, which is very similar to the dwarf Greek. Um, but I find that it grows all year long. Some of these plants, because they're uh, annual herbs, as it gets hot, they speed up production. They grow their leaves and they grow flowers and then they become woody because the flowers are trying to build seed. So your basil kind of gets spent. That's why you want to keep replanting basil every couple of weeks in your garden. The spicy globe tends to stay a nice bushy plant for the entire season. If you want something you can just go and harvest regularly over the season. So there's the cinnamon basil. Now I recommend getting these little totes. They're shoebox totes. They only cost about a dollar at Home Depot. And why I like them is because you can transport your seed starts around just like this. Now, we'll talk about lighting indoor and outdoor in a second. I always bottom water, even these trays, you've seen me do it before, I'm not gonna talk a lot about it, but don't pour water on top of any of uh, your seed starts because it splashes stuff around, it splashes the seeds around and it's just messy. But I like bottom watering. For feeding, at this point, I use a one gallon jug of water, and this is a processed or chemical fertilizer. You could use organic fertilizers, but because they are natural products, they're going to grow mold and fungus a little bit more than you might want, and they do have an odor to them. The processed fertilizers are perfectly 100% safe for you and your plants. I use both. And that was a quarter strength of fertilizer in there. This is a 10-10-10. I recommend when you're watering your transplants or you're feeding your transplants or your seed starts, really try and keep the fertilizer well below a 5-5-5. So I used a quarter strength. That's 2.5 N, 2.5 P, 2.5 K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And that is plenty of fertilizer. Bottom water. These were all just transplanted. I just pour in enough water to go up just a tad above the bottom, somewhere just like this. It will absorb the water up and these plants are fed and they're good to go. You don't need to feed them every time you water, maybe once a week or something like that, if that. So grow lights. A lot of people don't have grow lights. I have my closet right over here and if you're going to start them under grow lights, you're going to want to make sure the lights sit just above the plant. Uh, leave the lights on about 18 hours for about five to seven days once they germinate because you want the most light right away so your plants don't get spindly and leggy. And you can grow these perfectly fine 
indoors. You know, after about a week goes, goes by, you can cut the light down to 14 hours or 16 hours. Now, because most people don't have indoor grow lights, you can start your seeds just like this in the cups. You can even put these trays in here if you wanted to. And during the day, when it gets over 40 degrees, just take these outside and let them sit in the sun and then bring them back when you can't come home from work. Just don't let these plants freeze up or sit in the cold, you know, when it's under 40 degrees. So this way, by just bringing these in and outside, you're going to germinate your seeds using the direct sun and you're going to have great looking transplants just like this. And if, when these get to size, they're going to be about this tall by the time I, you know, get them into the garden. That would be like three, four dollars a plant. You're saving yourself a lot of money. Because you're taking plants from the indoors, and you can check out my other videos on this, to the outdoors. If they've been growing three or four weeks indoors, they have no tolerance to the sun and the sun will actually burn and damage the leaves. So if you're making that transition from the indoors to the outdoors, make sure you slowly take these out over a week's time, giving them like 30 minutes a day and slowly building up so they can get used to the sun. Hope this gives you some confidence to seed start basil indoors. You can do it in the cells just like this and transplant them up or you can directly go right into these cups. It's up to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therestofgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my seed shop and garden shop online. Thank you.